Great. Okay, so um, I, I want to um, say a couple things. Um, part of the part of the beauty of being on the Koali right now is that Kim, uh, as a result of being a base um, people and permissions module for a number of other Koali modules, has actually gotten quite mature and quite good. Um, it's it's um, got enough complexity. Um, to support all the various ways we think we want to do things. That, with that complexity comes um, potentially some confusion. But I will say that um, generally we feel um, very good about it and its capabilities in order to support whatever we need. So um, I want to take a slight departure um, and talk about rice in general. I'm, I'm going to make an assumption and just shout if, if this isn't correct that most people understand rice and its role within the overall Koali um, suite of products. Um, the idea with rice is that it is infrastructure level, um, base shared level modules that pretty much all of the applications want to take advantage of. So we've talked a little bit about Kim, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about that just to make sure everybody is uh, appropriately um, impressed with its capabilities and potentially confused by terms. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, but then uh, I also want to talk about the other modules. So KRAD, you may or may not have heard about that. Basically, it's a UI platform. Um, it has uh, been being um, modified, enhanced, and leveraged in support of Koali Student. Our UX um, um, lead, William Washington, has been working very closely with the Rice team to start to build out the suite of, of user interaction modules that we think we need as part of Koali Student. Um, it will be the UI platform for enrollment. Kim, like I said, we've talked about KRMS is Koali Rules Management System. Um, this is another uh, module that has been gotten a lot more attention recently. It is used heavily by the COEUS application, which is a um, support institutional research. We also believe that we are going to be heavily relying on, on KRMS and its rules capability as part of the enrollment module. We're going to talk a little bit later in the presentation about some of the ideas that we have about how we need to configure business processes and execute various checks or evaluations of logic. Um, this is going to be very much a um, a, a sandbox discussion because we are still really landing the plane from a service design perspective, but I hope you'll be as excited about some of these ideas as, uh, as I am. You probably won't, but maybe. Um, COM is the organization module. This is one that has been a little bit, um, I will say, neglected by Rice in that we hadn't had anyone to really pick it up and run with it. Recently, as in the last six months, uh, Michigan State University actually did an implementation of org. That is being considered as a contribution back. It may need a little bit of lining up with contracts in order to have that happen, but that's another one that organization is something that Poly student will rely heavily on. So the general strategy is to continue to contribute to and build out RICE modules as our various um, student, in this case, needs push it in order to build the overall quality community of modules. Um, there are two other uh, modules that I'll, I'll note right now, but they aren't right in our line of sight right this moment. One is Ken, which is notification, quality enterprise notification, and the other one is workflow. Workflow is actually a huge part of the curriculum management system because of the workflow through the approval process for courses. We believe there will be workflow in enrollment as well. It'll probably present a little bit differently and might be student initiated in some cases. Um, and, but it also is a tool or a, um, an infrastructure module that's been around for a while and has a lot of maturity. Not that there aren't you know, additional um, enhancements that we might want to make, but, but, but that's in, uh, in pretty good shape. I'm going to actually pause here. Um, Carol, I don't know if you want to chip in anything or sort out anything I might have said that was confusing? No, I, th I think actually that's a beautiful introduction to like the key portions of RICE that are, are very significant to the enrollment effort. So it is important to understand, you know, eventually, I know it's a lot of information, but it's important to understand how these pieces intersect with enrollment and how we are 
somewhat joined at the hip <laughs> around these efforts with rice. Any, any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, Marie from Northwest again. Uh, if you say it's further out, the question and notifications, uh, what is it further out in the sense of it will be in, um, say, 1.2? Uh, the next, uh, after the first uh, rollout of, of enrollment, or is it really after the second phase? So it will be in release three or four. Is it so further out, or is it planned to be? Okay, it's not just going to be for enrollment, but it's planned now for release one, but much further out. That's a really good question, and I'm going to be a little fuzzy on that. <laughs> um, I I. I think that, I don't know, Carol, do you want to yeah, answer it? I, I, I don't, I'm not sure how to answer that in terms of yeah, ENR1. Yeah, it's, I'm happy to answer that. So, um, Mari, it's basically it's a result of the scoping decisions that the Functional Council has made. You know, we're trying to understand what's the baseline that we need in an enrollment one and the first um, release of an enrollment module, like what's the base functionality we need. And the general consensus right now is that notification, um, enterprise-wide notification, and um, a lot of the workflow functionality is not required. Those are, you know, would be probably in the second release of enrollment. But it really, the reason they're called further out is, is solely the result of scoping decisions that, that the Functional Council has made. And since you're part of that group, <laughs> you know, if we need to revisit any places where we feel it's critical to have notification and workflow, we can talk about those things. But the reason they're pushed out is solely for scoping purposes, not for yeah, technical. That's a, yeah, I do understand it, it's not necessary for now. Uh, but I just want to know, is it in, uh, planned for in five years' time, or is it planned in 10 years' time? How long do we well, have to wait? Uh, OK, and that you can't really answer now. Yeah, probably two years. You know, it's whatever, whenever the second release of enrollment is really we start pushing on that functionality. It's a good question, though. Hopefully not 10 years. OK. <laughs> so uh, I almost have a dozen of like that. <laughs> Between two, okay. two and three, three perhaps. <laughs> OK. Yeah. OK, thanks. I will point out also that um, these modules are really in very, um, the, the can and Q are in really different um, statuses as, as, a, as a platform. Uh, I'm. I've heard rumors, I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone is actually using Ken. It's a great idea, but the particular implementation that we have of it as a Kuali Foundation um, is typically not been embraced by the various applications, whether it's you know financials or COIUS or whatever. Um, Q, on the other hand, is, is, like I said, very mature and something that we've used in curriculum management. Part of the reason for keeping this in mind is as Kuali student progresses, we want to also make sure that we're contributing to the overall community in a way that makes sense. It's possible that something like Ken gets picked up by another application, or we collaborate with other projects and find out that they have what their priorities are, and then other, other folks in the overall community may pick things up. So I'm going to go on. So um, Kim. Uh, so it's creation and management of people, students, parents, instructors, advisor. It's identity management for security services purposes, sorry, so user login and access rights. This is a part that many people have sort of bypassed and then almost pushed to Kim because of things like LDAP. Um, in ENR, there's a lot about Kim that is, is good for an identity and a permissions perspective, but it's not really teed up yet for managing people. It's about um, identifying people. And so I'm listing here a couple of the, a couple of the things that we'll need to work on. Um, there's going to be additional biographic and demographic data. So we've already identified attributes that need to be built out. Um, currently, there is no real matching logic. And, and actually, I want to apologize. Bullets two and four in this section probably should have been merged or at least next to each other. So that idea of, of matching logic and then identification and merging of duplicates is something that they that is not in place right now. I do know there's another um, Kowali project, KPME. I'm not even sure what that stands for. Carol, I don't know if you can help me with that. Uh, ma people management for the enterprise. 
Okay, so I know they're very interested in this. They are, yeah. <laughs> I think that's something we can yep. we can hopefully collaborate on. Um, but really, that the HR and then student are the first two Kuali applications that have the number of people that we need to worry about stuff like that. So this is where, again, collaboration across the community may help build out the right capability for all of us. Um, we talked a little bit about university ID assignment. I made the point that we know there are there may be multiple identifiers for a single person, and we'll need to be able to support that. Um, batch thinking of large numbers of people from outside sources. Th those have already been referred to. Admissions and HR are probably the two big ones right off the bat. Um, right now, there's no capability to relate people to people in Kim, so we're going to be adding that um, that ability. Uh, and then this idea of con configurable control over access to sensitive data. Um, that is uh, not part of what's in the base um, application right now. As we go through each of these, we'll be working with the RICE group to determine if this is something that should be in Kim or whether it's a layer of person that's a quality student person that um, builds, and ex builds on and extends Kim. Um, the last note is in alignment with PESC. We've made it a deliberate effort to um, check, especially in areas like, uh, I'll jump ahead to things like the academic record and the transcript and student or people to use some of the PESC work and make sure we're in alignment with that. It's a huge project, by the way, so I don't, yeah. So to circle around, and let's go kind of left to right. So we, we talked about roles. Like a role might be a department curriculum coordinator. Um, roles can be assigned to members with qualifiers. Again, so the role of department curriculum coordinator is assigned to John, who's the department admin. And he can only do things for English and history. Um, role types are, if you back up a level, they're the thing that says which aspect of the, of the um, person will needs to be aligned from a qualifier perspective for this role. So for instance, for the department curriculum coordinator would be that department. Um, this also allows us to generate what we call derived roles based on member of, of um, based on other data in the system. Permissions are just those examples in from our curriculum management we have Course service dot create course. This is getting slightly technical, and we're using the dot notation. But it's actually readable, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, there are templates that allow you to set up a whole set of permissions. And then, of course, you can do the mapping. So I think this is just a, a recap of most of what you heard. It's just putting it specifically in Kim terminology. I, I'm, I'm going to pause. I, I, I want to thank um, both Steve and Ruth. You guys did a great job of uh, landing the plane functionally on what Kim does. So I had a very easy job. <laughs> Kathy, I have a question um, about the um, security setup. So is there work on, on kind of uh, the management side of how whoever manages these permissions as they get more complicated? what kind of tools they have to do that appropriately? A great question, Walter. We were actually just talking about this with, um, with Christina, the UX person, the other day. Um, Kim has, a, again, a lot of features and functionality. It is not always particularly easy to use as an interface in terms of managing it forward. So what we've talked about, and, and the service team came up with it from a um, layering perspective, and of course UX came up with it from a usability perspective, um, but we both landed in the same place, which is we may very well need to define a layer, an ab uh, um, concrete business layer on top of some of those abstract context with concepts within Kim to get to that user, usable user interface that you're talking about. Because absolutely, we're going to have to do that. Again, technically, you can use Kim today and do everything you want to do. Is it as easy to manage as we might like? Probably not. How that gets prioritized, talk to Carol. Also, be, it might be helpful to think about parameters for users when they implement. Because I know that on our, in our current you know, old system, um, we've had so much freedom that we've made it 
so complicated. You know, we've kind of made it more complicated than it needs to be on our own. And so depending on the level of, you know, the way it's managed at a certain campus, uh, you know, I can imagine that um, create, it gets so creative that it, it makes it very hard to just um, manage the system. It'll look like Kuali's the problem as opposed to thinking about how to assign the, the permissions. Right. And well, and I think this is an area where some, you know, UX um, studies might be able to help us with that. I mean, I kind of have two thoughts. One is, as you know, moving to a system, a new system allows everybody to kind of reevaluate. So you have that kind of opportunity for some fresh start. Um, at the same time, I'm hoping that some of these ideas of templates of roles might facilitate that. But then also, as a community of implementers, perhaps there start to be some best practices that arise. I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, it's a, it's a, part of it is a factor of time. You know, over time, things get more convoluted. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of, I guess, my thoughts right now. I'm not, I'm not sure. It, it's not all a system problem, but I think the system could facilitate. OK, great. Yeah. Thank you. Great questions, thanks. I'm getting lost on how not to share. <laughs> You're not sharing anymore. Oh, okay, good. Christina's sharing. Okay, Christina, great. we can see your um, Skype dial. I don't know if that's the right uh, screen. Sharing the wrong display. Okay, so now, so basically we just covered the, the topic of people and permissions, so the functional area of people and permissions. And before we leave the session today, I will point you to all the artifacts that we have currently around people and permissions, including data, um, requirement statements, user stories, service contracts, whatever UX artifacts we have. So we'll do that at, at the end. That's sort of a, a very broad overview of how we're thinking about the people that KS needs to accommodate and, um, and the permissions that KS needs to accommodate. And again, there's a heavy reliance here on our middleware, RICE. So we're really working closely uh, with RICE on, on these particular aspects. Now we're going to move into setup as it relates to um, really things that are more specific to the enrollment environment. Um, so academic years and calendars, these are things that are really under the purview of KS um, as opposed to middleware. <laughs> so now we're getting into more really KS-driven functionality. So we're going to look at academic years and terms and associated milestones. And then we'll move into setting up the registration environment. So just a little bit of context setting as to, as to where we are. So go ahead, Christina. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to add to that context and just do a very high level look at what, what that is, what the setting up is, and what, um, who, who would be doing it and what that is. So the academic years in terms, this is that, the, the site map that you, you've seen before in the last, or may have seen before in the last training, I guess you may not have attended. Um, and this is just a static version of, of where that kind of work would happen, where you would go to set up the academic years in terms the term detail, do any rules or any other things that would, would be involved in setting up the registration environment. Um, a little later, I think we're going to look at the application map again. So this is just kind of a high-level view of that. This is looking at, this, this artifact is a, um, a prototype that was, it was part of the analysis and design team. And so I have to stress here that that while this, this should help give a, a quick overview of what's going on here and who's doing it, it will very likely look much different after we get through with further development and you know, testing it and adding in more detail and a lot of it. But that said, it hopefully can give us a, a, a high level overview of what's happening there. So what is happening is that the central administrator is going to come into the system and need to set up a new academic year. And Again, this also, this is a sketch of, what, of one way that that can happen. It may not end up looking anything like this. Creating the new academic year brings the, that person into a space where he can select the type of academic year to create, whether it's undergraduate, graduate, um, name it, put a date and time in it, add start and end dates, and then begin to define the terms. 
And we'll get a little later in the presentation, I, I believe we'll be talking about how terms are kind of um, fit under academic years, but they're also independent. So the defining of the term can happen at this, this space where you're setting up some of the details that go into um, the, the fall term, the registration period. There's some notes on this showing that there's a lot more detail. There's obviously a lot more detail that goes into setting up an academic term, but this, again, should give you a quick idea of what's going on. Um, the idea that you might need more than one, you know, the fall term, the winter term, multiple terms that are happening there. And then the ability to add in holidays, specific holidays that, you, that your school celebrates or needs to celebrate, and whether or not they're instructional or non-instructional holidays. Um, and just the ability to, to go through and add in, add in the detail. The next piece of this prototype is that once that academic year has been created, there's a space where you can view it. That, and that's getting back to, to Carol's what is management, part of management, maybe just looking at it or making one small change. So there might be multiple ways to, to consume the information of the academic year a quick look at an at-a-glance view, a detailed view that would provide a lot of detail for all of all of the different fields and pieces of information all together. Again, this is kind of a, a very light snapshot to give you an idea. Um, or a calendar view, being able to look at that, look at all that information laid out of the calendar. These are different ways of consuming and looking at that information that might be available not only to the central admin, but the viewing part might be available at, to a broader group of people. Um, and then the last piece of this is looking at a kind of a listing of the academic years in terms that have been set up. And that, so you can see that there's terms available and there's um, years available. And by clicking on one of these, it would take you back to a place where you can see the detail of that. But that's just back to that, um, back to a concept that the academic years in terms, while the terms sit under a year, they can also be seen and managed independently uh, of, that, of that year. So I think that is, this is meant to just give you a, a flash look at what Steve or Ruth is going to be talking about next. Um, are there any questions about anything I've just shown here? Okay, well then with that, I'm going to pass it over to, I don't know who, who is, who's going to be taking over next. That'll be Ruth. I'll, I'll stop sharing and let, let them know. <laughs> 